This is my third lifespan. Since there's no record of an eviction for criminal reasons, the original owner of this body must have willingly evacuated these skin and bones at the age of 18 for reasons I'm not privy to. But her parents continue to love me, as if I'm their original daughter. The second host was evicted for a heinous crime. As per my country's criminal legal regulations, my body is fitted with a microchip that observes my behavioural patterns to deter criminal recidivism. It's an operating system implanted in my brainstem to remotely control my body during criminal activities. Privacy violations are rife on such bodies until their assessment confirms their purity, which can take anywhere from a couple of years to decades. My purity test is close, but we're neither given an exact date nor told what to expect, much like the forensic evaluation. Passing the purity test means I could ultimately be free of the microchip. I'm terrified that one tiny wrong move could destroy my chances. I need to be perfect. I need to be perfect. I must be perfect. One day, I'll be free. But how can I be free when my womb is a grave, killing any new life that tries to form, any seeds that my husband plants in it? A black cloud hangs over me. We lost the fetus during our first round of IVF, and now we trundle about the house, broken and forlorn, having thrown all our savings at it. I didn't pay the alarming cost for mind transfer reincarnation to receive an infertile body with an artificial arm, even if it is a surgically attached, fully functional bionic prosthetic. I couldn't tell it apart from the rest of my body until my doctor peeled back the synthetic skin to show me the first day I was revived. But I don't know why this arm was amputated. My parents won't tell me what happened to their first daughter in this body. So I don't know if it's the first or second daughter who lost this arm. Or how? I feel robbed. I filed a report against the Body Hope Facility. The Body Hope Facility. Body Hop. Body Hope. We give every soul hope. But it's in their indemnity clause, which allows them to supply bodies they deem in perfect condition, not what the host considers perfect. There's nothing I can do. It's back to the old routine now. The ovulation alert waking us to morning darkness. Elifasi thought it'd be exciting to do it in the shower. The one thing we can vary. The only thing we can control in our lives. Suddenly, he wasn't in the mood. So I said, just stick it in and come. It's not like you ever last anyway. His mouth puckered. He hammered me. I leaned against the cold tiles, zoning out into an out-of-body experience. I was a robot. The sex was mechanical. I'll need to work something out so he forgives me for my quippy remark.